Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. Welcome in, welcome in. Winning Cures Everything. I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. I'm John. We got Ricky Rose, John Rose, Rose, Johnny the Fish in the house. John Roser. You can find him on Twitter at underscore, no, at John underscore Roser. Yeah, it's right there in front of you, man. Come on. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I'm pretty bad about that. Right but there on the screen. You know what I got, though? We got the drums. We got, the drums. We got, that, we got that sweet, sweet jam. Oh, it's gorgeous. It's wonderful. This is NFL Gambling Picks for week number five. The show, as always, brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They have got six wonderful, fabulous sports books. You can find more information on them, along with everything else that's going on with our friends down in the Delta, over at tunicatravel.com. You can find us over at winningcureseverything.com. You can find all of our picks, our previews, our podcasts, etc., if you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, whatever your favorite podcast app is, please hit that subscribe button. Leave us a nice review. Tell your buddies about the show, regardless of the fact that we have not been very good this season. You know who was good last week? Boss Hog. Boss Hog won the football pick em contest last week. He was, you're getting really good at that. Really good at that. Bro. He went eight and two, no, nine and one. He went nine and one last week. The only person that went nine and one. We had one hundred and fifty some odd people in the uh, in the pick'em contest, and he did better than everybody, including myself. I went five and five in that thing. Sucked. Terrible. Wouldn't even wouldn't even profited. Just ah, oh, ridiculous. Okay, so go enter this week's gambling picks uh, or football pick'em contest over at winningcureseverything.com. We have a surprise prize that we will announce to the winner whenever we get it. Uh, Next week, we should have a list of what will be coming out for the rest of the weeks. Of course, that prize will be sponsored by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. Let's jump in. Are we ready to do this? Yep. All right, everybody's got some picks. We're rocking and rolling. I I will say, unlike unlike these two guys, um, I am now betting the NFL this year, 10-3 and betting the NFL. (laughs) So... Very different. Hey, look, last week I went four and one, profited one hundred seven dollars. I lost my big bet, but I won all my other ones, so it ended up being profitable. I don't That's bet good. a ton on the NFL. It it, tear, it freaks me out too much. I, I never exactly bet. I never bet big numbers on the NFL. I'm always they're always smaller bets because I screwed it's up just so hard. But yeah. I, two weeks ago I bet the Titans at the Jags because they had a history of destroying the Jaguars. Gardner Minshew, who I was like, I loved him at Washington State, but I didn't anyway. I bet 150 bucks on the Titans. I will Ooh. never bet that team again. Ever, ever, ever. Chris Ooh. Chris went 2-2 two and two last week, lost $13.35. On the season, I am 9-13. and 13. That is down at 6.79 units. That's not horrible. Now, well, I, it, I, can, I can come back. Yeah. Not good. Chris is 8-11. and 11. He is down 5.22 units, both of which, not good. Yes. Not good. But that's okay. We're going to get there. I'm getting healthy this week. This is a marathon, not a sprint. Yes. Uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm getting healthy this week. I, I can feel it. I can feel it. Yeah, and I, I know you can. And we're, and we're Kenyan. You, you coming in. Like Vinny <laughs> Verno always in, says. Coming in hot. It's a marathon, not a sprint, and I'm Kenyan. <laughs> all right, game number one for me. Ravens at the Steelers. I'm buying all in on it. I'm buying all in on it. Give me the Steelers plus three and a half. I think that they've got this figured out. I think Lamar Jackson is not that good. I think this Ravens offense has been figured out. That Steelers defensive line, going up against that Ravens offensive line, love it. Love it. Cam Hayward, he's going to be eating. He's going to be eating. Give me all them points. Steelers plus three and a half. Love them here. 50 bucks at minus 110. Chris, what you got? Oh, Jay, are, we, are we going John first? Yeah, we, we, can, we can roll me. Look, I'll, I'll, I'll go with the one that it, it's, it's worked every week and uh, that nobody catches on to these, which is why I find the value in the first half lines because people do not bet them a lot, so there's value there. The Patriots' unders in the first half, they keep hitting. They keep hitting, 
And this week, we get the Patriots. We get the sorry-ass Washington Redskins, who we know ain't scoring against the Patriots' defense. We get that over-under number at 23-and-a-half. So, basically, the Patriots are going to have to be up 24-28-nothing at halftime for this to not hit, which is possible. But if you look at what they've done, they typically start out a little slow and just kind of play around with teams. And then eventually build a big lead. Eventually build a big lead. Patriots, Redskins, under 23 and a half in the first half. I like it. So I'm staying in that game. I've got a little bit of, I'm just doing something different. I'm getting healthy. I've been bad. I've been real bad. And and I'm I'm doing something that I've never done. Not real bad. 8 and 11 ain't real bad. I'm doing something I've never done. First, I think if this was a college football line, Patriots versus Washington, it would be 21 points. Oh, easily. But because they're the pros and we respect professionals that will never make a 20-point line, we'll shame the hell on them, okay? Because the Pats are winning this game by 20-something points. I think Vegas is off. This is what scares me. I think they're off a lot. I think they're off a whole lot. I think this should be a 20-point line. It's 15 and a half. I'm taking $250. I'm putting it on the Patriots. <laughs> Two hundred and fifty dollars at getting, minus. I'm getting healthy. What is that? Minus, minus one ten. Yes, sir. Oh my God. Okay. Okay. Uh, next one up for me, the Bills at the Titans. Now I'm not betting on the Titans, but I am betting the under thirty eight and a half here. Uh, so far on the season, the Bills have hit every under. So far. I think that continues this week. No Josh Allen. I think the explosive plays are are out of the mix for Matt Barkley. Yeah. I think that Mariota will not be able to score against this defense. It's the third best defense in the league. Uh, could, yeah, yeah, third. They're the third best okay. defense in the league. I was going to say, they they might be. No, I mean, the other two are. The Pats and the Bears. Just a different, not not much, there ain't a whole lot, of, but they're different. But there's there's a separation there. They're different. Nobody's got um, Khalil Mack, but, but the Bears. Yeah, I think, I think the Bills going on the road and the Titans coming off of a big win I think nobody is scoring much here. I I do like that Titans defense a lot. Under 38 and a half at 50 bucks at minus 110. Well, I can can get you 105. Give me 105 then. Let me save you a little juice. It's almost midnight. I can get down with it. All right. That sounds good. I'm going to stick with that same game. I'm going to take these Buffalo Bills plus two and a half. I can get it under three right now? Yes, sir. I'm going to take those Buffalo Bills, and if they ever put out a freaking money line on this game, you get yeah. a little bit on the Bills' money line, too. They're going to beat the Titans. The money line. Yeah. I don't what, think what the it? Titans are that good, and I do think Buffalo's a pretty good team. Is it three? Yeah, it's two and a half. Oh, it's two and a half now. It's two and a half, and then I got no money line. Two and a half. And I, I bet I can find a money line for us, but that, that'll be fine. Chris, what, yeah, uh, what I'll is move your on. next one? All right, so here's where my... My little trickery comes into play. I'm all in on the Pats. I don't see a world in which they lose their game. So the rest of my games will be a two-team parlay with the Pats money line minus 1,000 and an NFL team spread that's minus 110, which is basically going to give me the Bears minus 5 for plus 110 instead of minus 110 at the Raiders. I know that Oakland's won two football games. I know that they went on the road and they beat a really good team in the Colts that I like a lot, a team that I value a lot. I'm going to tell you, this Bears defense is really good. That Oakland Raiders offense has no prayer, no prayer whatsoever. I don't I don't know about the Bears offense. I know this. It, I, I don't know that it matters. I don't see this defense giving up any touchdowns in this game. Is this the Lil Max return to Oakland? Yes, sir. Is this the London game? Uh, it, oh, it might be. A it London might be a game. London game. It might be a It'll London game. The it's, it. it's showing one p.m. Eastern, but I could have sworn I saw something about the Raiders going going overseas. Like I really thought well, that this one was one p.m. Eastern. That's also Oakland's the home team. That wouldn't make any sense. That would have that game starting at eleven a.m. Yeah, that's that's what Pacific. I was. That's what I was trying to figure out. Like, this just doesn't make any sense. Bad radio. We should have figured this out before we started. Uh, it's all good. I, I just I didn't know your picks. Um, let's see. There well, we go. I mean, that's that's on me. That's on me. No, no, no. It's you all good. You always tell people uh, where the games are and what time, and I don't care about uh, it. Going back to that Bills money line, it is, uh, it is sitting at 
plus 140 or plus yeah, 135. Bears Raiders. It's a London game. All right, so a London game. You, you don't care. October do you? 6th at Tottenham no, Hotspur I, I, Stadium, I, I Bears Raiders. I know this. Khalil Mack is going to stick it right up John's ass. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're probably right. Good old Gruden. All right, so Bears oh, minus Puma. five. With the uh, <laughs> Bears, basically, you're looking at the Bears minus five plus 110. So with, with, the, Pats with money the Pats money line. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm in. I'm that, in. That's that for the duration of today. Okay. I can do that for every one of them. All right. Uh, is it is it my you. turn? It's you. It's me now. It is all on me. All right, I got two bets on this game. That was $75, I'll tell you that. You didn't tell me that. Uh, but that's fine. $75. All right, that sounds good. Uh, next game up for me, Jags-Panthers. I'm going under 41. Uh, look, the Jags, basically every game has been going under. I'm all in on this. I, I think that these two defenses are really good. I think Kyle Allen and Gardner Minshew are going to be a lot of fun to watch, but I don't think they're going to put up a lot of points here. I'm going under 41 for 50 bucks here, and then my other play is Jags plus three and a half because of Gardner, Gardner Minshew the second. Dude has been unbelievable. Jags as an more than a field goal underdog. I mean, this this has a field goal game written all over it. Whoever gets the ball last is probably going to win this game. Like Kyle Allen. Coming down the field, they kick a field goal to win twenty to seventeen, or, or the other way around. You know, I could totally see Gardner Minshew doing it because he's he's been doing it. Uh, so yeah, give me the Jags plus three and a half at the Panthers, and then give me the under 41, 50 bucks on each one of those at minus one ten each. I'm gonna stick with that game, Panthers Jags. I'm going opposite of you. That spread is three points right now. I'm going to buy the half point, get it to Panthers minus two and a half, and I'm going to roll with the Panthers on this. I'm okay. going to take the home team. Look, Gardner Minshew, yeah, it's Minshew Mania. Kyle Allen has been really good in these two starts, way better than Cam Newton's been in any of his last, like, ten games he's played. Let's I mean, him. against the Texans, now, it's not like he was lights out here. But let's let's like, keep in mind the Minshew Mania thing. Let's keep in mind... Leonard Fournette is the reason they, I mean, Leonard Fournette rushed for like 230 yards or whatever it was. Fournette's the one who was the guy in that game. Yeah, yeah. He was the workhorse. I like the, I'm giving, I'm taking the Panthers. I'll buy the half point, make it two and a half, and I'll give the Panthers a three point win probably because they're at home. Okay, okay. I can get down with it. If this game was in Jacksonville, I'd probably roll with the Jags, but it's in Carolina. I'm going to roll with the Panthers. Okay. This might be the fool's week. I'm not taking a single home team. And that that's a little bit scary in the NFL. I'm and I'm also betting on a bad quarterback this week. Here we go. Yeah, what what are you doing? <laughs> Vikings minus five and a half at the Giants. I think the bloom is going to fall off the rose when the Vikings come to town. Kirk Cousins drives me insane. He absolutely frustrates me like nobody else. But this Giants defense is a bad football team. They got three interceptions against the 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 Redskins last week. Uh, the Deadskins. That's a team that has quit completely. And I, I think, what what do I say about the Vikings? What do I say about Kirk Cousins? He's great from the front. If he gets a lead, he's a very good quarterback, and they win those games. When he's trailing, it's over. As soon as they got lost the first touchdown, as soon as the, as soon as Mitchell drove down. Scored the first opening touchdown. I knew that that Vikings back. I tore that ticket up. It's gone. It's gone. They're not winning that game. They're going to get the lead against the Giants. Daniel Jones is going to look like a rookie against the Vikings. They're going to win this game. They're going to win it by at least a touchdown. Five and a half with the Patriots money line makes it plus 110 for $75. Plus 110, $75. I'm going to stay on that game. I'm going the opposite of you. Of course you are. Giants plus five and a half against the Vikings. I haven't seen anything to show me that, one, the Vikings can win on the road. I have not seen that yet. Okay. They are two, nine, and one as a road team. And, and one of those was actually in a dome at the Lions last year. So, and that's, that's two, nine, and one against the spread. Right. I don't know what the dome has to do with anything, but okay. Because the Vikings are a dome team. 
Oh, okay. Like it, it, so they, they played in a comfortable surrounding. So when they play outside, they suck. They're terrible. And, I mean, you couldn't see the Giants getting up by a touchdown here? Nope. I, I could 100% see that happening. Nope. Come out quick, make something happen. Seems like a lot of points to me. Daniel Jones has played against two bad defenses. Uh, I'm going to take the Giants plus five and a half. And that, that's, yeah, I mean, I'm with you. I'm going to roll the other way, though. Okay. I, I'm, I'm going to ride this Daniel Jones bandwagon until it, it stops. And then we'll see what happens. But I, I have bet on Kirk Cousins on the road way too many times. But it's, not, a, it's not an on the road that he just can't, you can't bet against him or with him against good defenses. You can't bet with him when the team gets down. Because if they start trailing, it's over. Oh, great. But I don't see them trailing. Okay. That, and that's totally fine. I'm going to roll the other way, though. Cool. Uh, Daniel Jones, better make me some money this week, buddy. Who you got, Roser? I'm going to go Thursday night. We're going to go up to Seattle. Dun, dun, dun. And we're going to go with the L.A. Rams plus the one and a half. Get them a little bit on the money line. Although the money line ain't big enough, it's it. You're better off just taking the one and a half. Yeah. Uh, just take the one and a half um, on the Rams. Look, the the road underdog has won outright all four weeks on Thursday night. Just roll with it again. Yeah, I, I could get down and that. and go to hell, Seahawks. <laughs> I hate the Seahawks. So, uh, yeah. Go Rams. All right, what what you got, buddy? Indianapolis Colts. Okay. okay. Covered for me. Covered for me. Covered for me. I got beat by the Raiders last week. Hurt me. Hurt me bad. Hurt my feelings. They're going to the Chiefs. And the kids at 11 points. Man, this is not the Jets. This is not the Dolphins. This is not the Bengals. You can't give double-digit points to a good football team. A team that's fighting playoff spot. Like they're gonna be a they're gonna be in the mix all year long. I, I'm just not laying 11 points to a good football team. When the Chiefs haven't looked like world beaters. The only reason that I'm staying away from that game is because that line stinks. There is no reason why they should be an 11 point favorite. There's no the reason court. they should be an 11. They're a professional football team, Gary. They're a real team. They're what's not the, the Deadskins. The, what's, the, what's the ticket count over at uh, 59, Vegas? 40, whatever. It's not, I mean, it's not 47, 53. Nope, that's a different thing. 42-58. It's nothing. It's it's normal. It's 50-50. I mean, that's crazy. It's 50-50. No. There's there's absolutely no reason they should be an 11-point dog to anybody in the league. I, I know. It's, so, in the NFL, there's not really a, a real look-ahead spot, right? No. Like Because they're pros. But I, but I am curious if the Colts maybe... You're overlooking the Chiefs? Are you kidding me no, right no, no. now? I'm saying they were overlooking maybe the Raiders. Oh, the Raiders. No, I just think that's the NFL. They just, man. Yeah, they just that's got just caught. the NFL. You got, yeah, you just got got. Every now and then that happens. You know what? They might get the Chiefs this week. It's entirely possible. I can't believe it's an 11 point line. That, that with my Patriots money line. Plus 110. Plus 110. $100. I'm just not laying double digits, man. I'm just can't, I can't do it. I can understand it. It might lose. My, can't. my last pick we're going to Monday night and I'm going to roll with the Browns and here's why because the 49ers do not cover home spreads they just don't I mean 1 in 17 in the last 18 as a home favorite that's not good that's that's terrible and until something happens to change that because you Bet on the 49ers at home against the Steelers without Ben Roethlisberger, and they didn't cover. So the streak continues. I'm going to roll with it again. Browns plus three and a half at the 49ers. I think these teams. Browns plus four. They're plus four? I'm looking at it right here. They keep moving around on me. Remember, I I come up with these lines. Like, I look at these lines before I come over here, which was five hours ago. Uh, So Browns, okay. Bet now at plus four. All right, Browns plus four at the 49ers, 50 bucks at minus 110. Uh, I could see Jimmy G throwing a couple of picks. I could see, you know, Baker Mayfield. Like, I'm, I'm not touching over-unders, anything like that. I can just see where this game ends up super freaking close. And at plus four, I mean, plus I'm getting more than a field goal. It's more than a field goal. You're taking the points. Yeah, I'm taking, I'm taking the points. I like that. 
Uh, I'm going to go back to your game. I'm going to go that Chiefs-Colts game. I'm going to play the under 56.5 in this game. It opened at 57, quickly went down to 56.5. I think it's probably going to drop a little more, too. Um, but I just think it's a lot of points. And, look, it's crazy to bet unders in Chiefs games because we know they, the Chiefs could score 40. Like, it's, that could, it's super easy. They, I mean, they could do that. Um, but, that I mean, that Colts defense it's, it's, is pretty good. The Colts defense is pretty good, especially if they can get Darius Leonard back this week. Like, yeah, I mean, I, I just I just think that's a lot of points. So I'm gonna I'm gonna just gonna roll with the under. In my last bet, I'm going to my night football. I'm betting on the Browns. Um, I I think it's very simple. Baker has to get the ball out of his hands. He they they played really well on the road. They're not afraid of that, so that's irrelevant. the The home field advantage in San Francisco is basically nothing. Yeah, and and the second the front seven. Of the of the 49ers, tough, strong. Baker's offensive line, garbage. Got to get the ball out of his hands. If he gets the ball out of his hands, the secondary is the worst in the league. It's it's the worst in the NFL. I, I think there are teams that have quit on their team that secondary is better than right now the 49ers. They're banged up, they're old, and they're not good. Odell Beckham gets open in the flat, or if he gets, he's going to be open all day long. He gets open on some of those quick slants. He's just going to take it to the house. He's going to take it to the house every time. I, I think this team is going to feast on a really bad secondary with Baker getting the ball out of his hands. That plus four. With the Patriots with the money line, $100 <laughs> plus 110. This is a really, like, honestly. I, I'm all in. Kind of smart way of going about this, right? A couple of weeks ago, now let's preface it. A couple of weeks ago, I did this, and I didn't think about it on the show, but I absolutely did this when the Patriots played the Jets. Now, that was minus one, like 26. And the Cowboys played the Dolphins, same weekend. Every bet I made, and I'd have to go back and look. I didn't do well, but every bet I made, I got like plus 125, 135, because they were three-team parlays with, Two money line parlays on teams that I just thought there's no way they're losing, and then my bet. And it worked out. It worked out pretty well. This week, I'm doing the same thing. There is the Redskins team has completely quit. The Patriots offense looked bad last week. I think Tom, I think Tom, I think this is going to be a, a beating of biblical proportion. Well, you I think might be could, right. I think he could put 60 to 70 on them. Good God. That's I scored 60 to 70 <laughs> points in an NFL game. Sure. Tom, two, Bra- Tom two, Brady won't be two, in the two, game long enough for him to do that. They'll take they'll pull him out. They won't they won't pull him out. Have you have you met Bill Belichick before? He absolutely won't pull his ass out. He pulled him out in the Jets game, and what what's his ass? If they're up in the 42 game, to nothing you know, after the what, third quarter. He'll he goes in. He goes in, he immediately throws a pick six, and they're still up by 30 something points. Doesn't matter. Tom gets back thrown in the game. Yeah, that's a good point. It does not matter. Bill is Bill is not pulling Tom, he will play the entire game. How much are you putting on the Browns? Hundred bucks. Hundred bucks. All right. So I've got a 250, 75, 75, 100, 100. All at plus 110. For those that did not follow us the last two seasons, Chris has hit over 62% the last two years in a row. This year's been just a complete beatdown. But I I mean we're we I, got it documented. Yeah, we got it documented. So I, I got faith that uh getting they, healthy it, this week. This yeah. week I'm getting healthy. Now I'm, I got to tell you, if the Patriots don't cover, if the Patriots lose, well, they the game, gonna, they're not going to lose. Like we can't have normal <laughs> conversations. They're, yeah, they're not losing to the Reds. They're not going to lose. I might lose all four of these bets. Yeah, because all four of them are bad. I bet all dog, all road teams. That doesn't really bode well. Which last week all road teams covered like a champ. Yeah. A ton of them won outright. But that's not normally how you make a lot of money and do well by betting road teams. I'm betting all road teams. But the Patriots aren't losing. They're not going to be the. They might not cover, which would really hurt me. But they're not losing that game. Now you're probably right. You're probably right. All right, that is going to wrap up the NFL Gambling Picks Show. Uh, right now, we are going to talk to our buddy T.J. Reeves from the Three Dog Thursday podcast. Every single week, we've got the man, TJ Reeves, from the Three Dog Thursday podcast in with us. You can find him on Twitter at Buck Sideline Guy. TJ. How is Tampa, Florida this time of year? Uh, how do you think we're doing after 55 big ones? A franchise <laughs> record, Chris Giannini, 55 points. 
<laughs> last week at the L.A. Coliseum against the unbeaten Rams. Buccaneers getting nine or nine and a half in most places. Didn't even need them. This is why you line up and play the game. So as much as it was dejection a week ago, week and a half ago, whenever you're hearing us and seeing us, when Matt Gay missed the field goal and the B-U-C-C-A-N-E-E-R-S, go Bucks lost to the Giants. Man, what a turnaround to go out to L.A. and win uh, in that setting at the Coliseum with the 70,000 Ram fans waving those towels and Jared Goff throwing the ball 173 times till his arm almost <laughs> fell off. It was just – it was wild, guys. I mean, uh, honest to God, when you saw the score flashing by on the, on the ticker at the bottom of the screen or on your phone and you saw 21 nothing, you thought it was backwards, didn't you? I, Confess. I thought, I thought Confess. an intern at ESPN was getting fired. <laughs> I thought they had put the wrong team up there. I, I was – Super confused, and and the wrong guy was throwing interceptions this time. I'm so used yeah. to Jameis throwing interceptions, and this time it was Jared Goff. And it just, I, look, I had the Rams minus nine and a half. Like, I, I was so convinced that there was no way that Jameis was going to go out there and play well. And uh, tell me this. I mean, you're, you're there. I, did you see this coming at all? I, I really felt they were going to have a good chance to win the game. I would be lying to you if I thought that they were going to be up 21 nothing, be up 38-20, be up 45-27 as that game went on. They just kept scoring and scoring and scoring and obliterated the Rams' defense. And, uh, and then only fitting that the final play ends up being a sack fumble where Ndamukong Sue, who was discarded by the Rams after the Super Bowl <laughs> season last year, picks it up and rumbles in for the touchdown. I mean, it was an, it was an epic day. We're going to talk. It's a regular season game. It's not a playoff game, much less something like a Super Bowl. But they're going to talk about that game around here for Buccaneer fans for years, maybe for a decade or more. You go out to L.A. and hang 55 on a really good team like that, wow. It, uh, it does set up something interesting, and, and it, Roser, maybe you know this better than I do. Uh, I don't remember the last time that a, that a division had all four teams sitting at 2-2 two and two through four weeks of the season. I, I mean, it's probably happened before. Uh, I, I'm probably, I bet the NFC East has seen that before probably. With, with those teams. Yeah, because, I mean, there have been years where it felt like – it felt like there was a run of years where it was like every team in the NFC East finished 8-8 eight and eight or 9-7 <laughs> and seven or 7-9. and yeah. nine. Like They were all, like, right there. So it's probably happened there. Uh, but, yeah, no, it, it seems like the NFC South, it's always that division where there's a different winner every year, it seems like. Well, I can't see him right now. I'll see him later on YouTube. But Giannini is still smiling because he was talking about the blo- the Bucks plus one fifty to win the division no, a couple no, of no. weeks plus, ago. Plus twelve hundred to win the division. Plus twelve. Sorry. I'm sorry, I got it all wrong. No, plus twelve hundred. So I, you're smiling even bigger. I may right have a little capital on that play, and uh, I'm, I might be holding that ticket. Yes, it's a vested interest. That's right. So, all right. So we're we're talking NFL. Um, let's 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 stay on NFL. Because we, we started off with NFL. We were going to talk college, but let's make this the NFL segment. Um, there's, some, there's some goofy lines this week a little bit. One that I want to kind of lead you into, see if maybe, you, uh, maybe you've been thinking about this. The Giants are five-and-a-half-point underdogs mm. to the Vikings this week. Uh, tell, me, tell me your thoughts here. I mean, it, obviously, Daniel Jones playing really, really well. Uh, the Vikings coming off of a loss. I mean, they're... They're like 24 and 9 against the spread coming off of a loss in their last uh, however many that is. Um, tell That'd me. be 33. Th- there you go. Yes, it would. The math is not my biggest. Even story. in the Mid South. Even <laughs> in the Mid South. 24 and 9 is 33. Very good. So, yeah. so tell me what you think here. I, uh, which way should, is, is this something that you will be looking to play on yeah, Three Dog Thursday? Yes. On, I, that's a heavy lean on Three Dog Thursday under the category. We're going to have a theme this week of uh, why are those guys favored? And that's, it, it's the same thing with the Vikings. When we get to NFL Sunday here, the Vikings who looked miserable against the Bears, I know the Bears' defense is outstanding, but uh, Kirk Cousins, the $84 million man, having trouble getting anything going, and they roll into New York where the Giants have won back-to-back games now, including breaking my buck's heart, but then they look really good against what appears to be a really bad Redskins team. But the Giants are at home and you're getting points. That is awful tough to pass up here. I know the argument can be made that maybe Daniel Jones is due to play a bad game. Minnesota's good on defense. 
but I'm leaning heavily towards towards that one under the category of why are those Viking dudes favored? Now, let's let's try and lean into something maybe that you might know. Uh, the Rams are an underdog at the Seahawks this week. And that's a Thursday night game. Is there any chance that this is just people looking at what happened last week? Well, I mean, it's a, it's obviously a division rivalry situation. They've had success with McVay in Seattle winning outright. It's a short week where the Seahawks are at the advantage because they were at home. Uh, or actually, you know, Seattle was in Arizona, I'm sorry, but they are home in this instance, uh, and they get the extra day of practice. It's an advantage to an extent for the team that's not traveling on Wednesday. Um, and again, I, the, the the Rams have nothing wrong really with their offense if they don't turn the ball over. It's amazing that Gurley only carried the ball five times last week in the game. But again, golf was just so pass happy. Uh, you know, Thursday night football and for Seattle, you know, they, they are now looking at this as, hey, we get this win here. We're now tied for the division and technically ahead in the division at three and two if we get the win coming up uh, on Thursday night. So, yeah, that's uh, that's an interesting one uh, for the Rams. I, I just don't know about the Rams' defense, guys. I mean, the Buccaneers riddled them in that game. And, Chris, you saw them in person, the Rams, against the Browns, and it was more – the Browns not taking advantage of opportunities in that game, or perhaps it would have been two losses for the Rams. No, I completely agree. That game was super winnable for the Browns. That Browns offense might have been one of the worst offenses I've ever seen in person in a single game. D- didn't have a clue about what to do, and, and, and I definitely didn't leave there thinking that the Rams' defense was a juggernaut by any stretch of the imagination. Um, I, I have a game I want to ask you about. How many points would you have to be getting for the home dog Washington Redskins laying against my Patriots? Uh, a whole lot more than, what is it now, 15? 15, it is, it is 15, 15, and, 15 and, a half. and a half. I woke up and said, if this thing is, I texted Gary yesterday, and I said, if this thing is under 20, I'm, I'm going to make the biggest wager I've ever made in my life. On the <laughs> He's going to make a mortgage payment on it. Uh, yes. I'm going to make And I saw well, John, not, well, wait a minute. Now, John, you're big on the first half lines, right? So I what love is the first, first half lines. Or the first half under. What's the, what's the situation on this uh, game? It, it, and we it, don't know. We it, don't, I mean, is it Colt McCoy? Is it uh, Case Keenum? Is it Dwayne Haskins? Is it Joe Theismann? We don't know who it matter? is at quarterback. <laughs> yeah, does it matter? Yeah, another that, good point. Yeah, that's what that that's what kind of worries me a little bit. Well, Brady also calling out the offense too, saying that their <laughs> offense sucked. Um, that, that, that worries me about this week. Uh, but if you look at all the Patriots' first halves, um, even the Dolphins game, they needed that late touchdown to in the one game Antonio Brown played. They needed the late touchdown to Antonio Brown to get the, to cover the first half, but the under in the first half hit on that one. It was the same thing against the Jets, too. Like, they don't just, like, blow you out in the first half. I think it's because Belichick knows he can kill these teams, so he's not really, like, going to go wild on them. Um, the, it's 23 and a half in the first half here, but the only thing that worries me, yes, if Dwayne Haskins plays, I mean, against the Patriots defense, throwing a rookie, I mean, that's like, I mean, you're, that's like taking like a little gazelle and just throwing it to a, the lion's den, you know, he may throw three pick sixes on like his first three attempts. He had game. 12 completions last week, nine to the Redskins and three to the Giants. So hopefully his <laughs> ratio improves. If for the, the uh, for the Dwayne Haskins, the rookie, we'll see if he if gets the, in there. If the Giants' defense beat them up the way they did, the Patriots' defense is going to feast on this offense. It doesn't matter who the quarterback is. Um, so that, that, just, that, well, that's how I looked at it. I looked at the it led, and that's how I looked at the under. I'm like, okay, the, basically the Patriots are going to have to be up 24 to nothing or 28 to nothing at halftime for the under not to hit yes. in the first half because the Redskins aren't scoring. They're so not scoring at all. yeah, they're not going to score on the Patriots. So. The, pa- the Patriots are going to have to have 24 or 28 at halftime because the Redskins are going to have zero. I'm with you on that, and you boys know I am headed off to the Bayou for the NFC South showdown with the Saints and the Buccaneers. The Buccaneers are the underdog, but it's back-to-back weeks as the underdog. That's going to be a knockdown dragout game in the Superdome. It'll be a lot of fun. We'll see if the Buccaneer offense can solve what's been a good Saints defense the last couple of weeks in particular. That one will be a lot of fun, gentlemen. How uh it, so it, before we wrap up this um or I guess to wrap up this NFL segment, how does that travel schedule work for you? Because this is a noon game in New Orleans. Are, are you going down, um, you know, early Saturday? I mean, how does how does this work? How, how typically does New it's mid. 
It's mid-afternoon the day before for most of these road trips. Obviously, to the West Coast from the East Coast, we go typically the day before. So we were there last Friday night. Uh, And I'm happy to report that even at 9 p.m. local time in Los Angeles, it's still gridlock on the interstate. And we (laughs) buzzed through with the police escort at 9 p.m. on a Friday. Just to throw that out there, not Not that it has anything to do with point spreads. But um, (laughs) so typically to the West Coast, like we'll play in Seattle later this year, you go on Friday. Uh, for a game in the in the eastern half of the country or the the middle half of the country uh, and back, you're only going to go the day before. So we'll be in the Big Easy in the afternoon and the evening. LSU will have already played because they're playing early. It's usually a hoot when you are there and LSU is playing in the French Quarter uh, while you're there. We'll miss out on that, but the the Superdome will be rocking. There is no question about that for Sunday because. They've got a chance, like we talked about on your show before, when Breeze got hurt, everybody was looking at if he's out six weeks, are they going to be 1-5? and five? Are they going to be 0-6? Oh they win Sunday against my Bucks. They're 3-0 and oh with Teddy Bridgewater. Who had that? I ask you winning, Kurt, you winning Cures dudes. Who had that? I don't know who had I mean, that, but it could happen. We both had Seattle picked against them. All right, that, uh, that's going to wrap up the NFL segment with Mr. T.J. Reeves. All right, we appreciate TJ for being here with us today. Of course, go over to winningcureseverything.com. Go over to uh, the Three Dog Thursday podcast. Go check out Roser on the Chris Vernon show over at what? Grizzlies.com app? Grizzlies.com, the Grizzlies app, grindcitymedia.com. All the different places. Yeah, you we're live on YouTube every day now, too. And so, there's the podcast. Yeah, and there's the podcast, Apple, Spotify, all those good things. All sorts of stuff. And we, we, will, uh, we will be having Roser join us much more regularly, of course, because this has been fun. Yeah, it's man. nice. Yeah, so, definitely. All right, winningcureseverything.com. Of course, the show brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. Six awesome sports books. You can find more information on them over at tunicatravel.com. Ah, here's to a winning week. Losing ain't solved anything, but winning cures everything. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.